So check this out. I finally figured out how to keep this from tangling. A while back, I made a video about a kitchen sideboard and it only got like 100 views, if that. Then I watched it and it was really bad. Now that I've re-edited it, I'm gonna re-release it and maybe you'll like it. One of the reasons why I even built a CNC was so I could cut large parts and not manhandle big sheets of plywood. So there I cut out the back. Here I'm cutting out the two sides. Use the CNC to cut out the top and then cut it to length. Ripped a couple shelves and marked it because I confuse it with the bottom and the top sometimes and cut all the face frame parts. This is before my fancy miter saw station. And all the rails and styles for the door parts get this fancy inside profile. I make a bunch of the profile and then I take it over to the miter saw and I cut it to length. First the styles, then the rails. I have a template that I use to set the height so I can coat my rails, make sure they're right height, and then I cut all the rest when they're flush. This is a big old bit that I use to profile all my door panels. And you can tell I've made some real custom zero clearance inserts. Then I measure for the panels and I cut them out. And then profile all four sides. MDF makes a ton of dust, but the profiles come out really, really nice. And it's the same process for drawer faces. Then you have parts. So you ever get your whole pile all done and all of a sudden you realize I'm one short, but actually I found it, and it's one of my top rails for my door, and I forgot to cope it. So I get to set everything up just to do one pass. Going to do a miter fold on the frame, so I put a 45 degree miter in all the frame styles, laid it out for pocket holes, and did the pocket holes and glued and screwed the frame together. Bottom rail of the door got a pocket that I put a V-groove bearing in, and then I fastened it with this Phillips screw. And then the door is going to slide on a track with the V-groove bearing. Therefore, the top rails and the bottom rails of the frame have to get a groove in them, as well as the bottom of the door. Then we set up the fence to put a groove in the bottom of the cabinet where the second track will go for the inside door. I use an inch and a half piece of solid on the front of my shelf to give it a thicker, better look. And I glue it, screw it, sand it, and then round it over. I lay the frames and the sides next to each other and then I tape them tight. So I'm going to make this miter fold joint. This is a heavy duty miter tape, but I found you can use blue masking tape just as well. And then the trick is trying to stand this thing up and flip it over. So we just put a little bit of glue down here. A lot of people like to over glue it. We stand it up nice and easy. We tape it off and secure it in place. Once this thing is all in place and secured off and taped, we don't touch it and we let it sit overnight. We had a casualty. It's not the first tear broken. Same with any of you other old guys, we break them a lot. So I switched over to these, had these for a while. Problem is these are one and a quarters. I've graduated to one and a half. I glued and screwed the bottom piece in place and this made sure that the miter fold was nice and stable when I went to turn it over. 
put some blocks on the back to help me when I put the back on. Put a bead of glue all the way around and finagle the piece into place. Exposed screws aren't going to be a problem. This is going to be a paint finish and they'll fill in really nice. And took off the miter tape to reveal a really nice joint. I use rubber spacer balls to keep my panels from rattling. I don't like to use glue. Glue doesn't allow for any or expansion or contraction, which isn't a problem with MDF. Gave it a couple love taps, made sure it was all in place, made sure it was square, clamped it, and let it sit. I put this additional skirt in on all four sides. This uh, keeps the sideboard off the ground so when you slide it around it doesn't chip the sides or the face. So I cut these dados here in this front rail and then just a little over three quarters, the width of my door is three quarters. And I held that one back just a little more than three quarters so there would be room for these bypass doors. I had already cut a slot in the bottom, but I forgot to cut a slot in the top, so I had to do that. And I came back, scribed the door, and cut it to perfect fit. Used a round over on all four sides of the door. And of course I got to sand it. And rounded over the frame as well. Now if I've got a nice flat surface, I'll use my orbital, but if it's anything with the profile or anything touchy, I hand sand. Mounted an additional rail for the inside door. On my top, I faked the inch and a half thickness and just built up the edges, glued it, mitered it, sanded it, and rounded it over. I leave my drawer support rails loose, then I slide the drawer in, make sure that it slides in and out real nice and easy, get the support rails where they need to be, then screw them off. You'll have to watch my drawer video to see how I make drawers really makes for a smooth operation. Spraying finish is a video of its own, but here I am just shooting one of the doors. A custom color picked out by the creative director here at the Old Guy Woodwork Shop. And it looks like it's gonna fit right in that space. Huh, and it does. Nice bypass doors, that way you don't have to have a lot of room in front of it for door operation. Nice slides in and out. We're gonna get legs on it so it doesn't rock back and forth. And some hardware. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video and the re-edit. If you like what we do here in the shop, give us a like and a subscribe. And leave comments as often as you can. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next riveting video.